Welcome to the uh, Empower Your Life. Um, this is uh, the fourth episode, and I'm very happy to have you, Asia. Thank you so much for uh, making a time for us or for me <laughs> and having a further discussion or further conversation about being an instructor and so on. How is Singapore? How are you doing? <laughs> Thank you for having me as well. And um, for Singapore, Singapore has been in a kind of funny weather lately. I'm like, kind of enjoying the cooling weather. <laughs> That's great. And how about you? Yeah, I'm a music coach, so life as instructor has been fun. I used to have a full-time job as a preschool teacher, but I decided to do my own freelance in music industry. Mm-hmm. So firstly, I started off with... Um, I started learning music since young. No, not really young, in my teenage years, when I was 13. So I started... Oh, wow. Like, yeah, no, mm-hmm. I started as just an interest hobby thing, kind of thing. You know, it happened like weekly in school, probably once or twice a week. So I started my interest from there. Eventually, I stopped my full-time job and I'm qualified to actually be an instructor. Mm-hmm. So I thought that it would be nice for me to focus on my industry and pursue what I really want to do. Yes. It's better But, to do your dreams now. Agree. But what I'm curious about, why have you chosen the Guzheng? Why have I chosen the Guzheng? It's something that kind of intrigues me since young. The moment mm-hmm. that I set my, my eyes on that instrument, I thought, okay, this is the instrument that I want to, I want to go for it. That I really want to focus on it. And I'm very, very determined from day one that I'm going to take out this instrument. So partly, another another side is that mainly it's a really old and traditional instrument. I think it will be really nice to actually keep a traditional culture thing going. Because, you know, as a society, we are constantly improving more and more high technology stuff coming and uh, I think uh, Singapore is a country that really kind of um, greatly influenced by the western side so a lot of people are actually learning instruments like piano this is a common one common instrument so yes. to me, I prefer not to be common <laughs> yes <laughs> we always want to be unique <laughs> so I thought okay firstly it's basically because of traditional reasons I think it would mm-hmm. be nice to actually go back to our roots to actually know to actually explore the traditional culture that has been passed on for generation and generation and Guzheng is an instrument that has already more than 2,000 years of history now it's around 2,500 years yes when you told me about that I'm like oh my god this is so interesting and this is so amazing and I'm so impressed that how much you can play and but uh, going back to your story none of your family members actually play the instrument right no, none. yeah it's very interesting <laughs> um, yeah. so it started when because uh, in a school setting you, you are actually required to choose one um, sort of like I think a common term is enrichment classes so it's outside mm-hmm. of So locally in Singapore, we call it the co-curricular activity. When I went across the booth, I'm like, I saw this instrument and I thought, okay, I, I just told I just told them. Um, because when you apply for it, it doesn't mean you'll get in. So mm-hmm. I just strictly put, my first choice is only Guzheng. Second choice is still Guzheng and the third choice is still Guzheng. <laughs> <laughs> So I just don't want other instruments. I mean, there are a lot of other traditional instruments, but you know, you just fall in love with that. Yes. You just fall in love with someone that love at first sight. It's just that happened. <laughs> yes. That's yes. We always wanted to try, give it a try. And then here you go. It was a pretty huge step because in, I'm not sure whether you know, but in Singapore, um, the it's not an industry that is really uh, recognized. Yeah. It is a uh, that's low in demand actually. So, it's a really skill based set of um, industry. Mm-hmm. It's not a stable job that you can actually be doing. You know, not like your you have a stable income, etc., etc. So, mm-hmm. I think it took me a lot of courage at that time to actually yeah. just venture into this. And like I like you said, my family was not um 
uh, they were not really into this area, so they won't really so supportive from the start. Yeah, it's more it's challenging for you. Very, very. They, they, even when I first started the day one, I told you in school, I told my mom I want to go for that. My mom was quite mm, skeptical, like <laughs> very young, because because our college life was at four years. So she was like, "Are you really going to spend your four years into this instrument?" And like, I don't think I'll just spend four years. I think I could spend my life forever. <laughs> this is something that I really determined to do, and I know that I will do it. It's just that it didn't occur to me. I will be teaching it one day. So, okay. Yeah. Long story in between. So, but I've been teaching since 2013 now. Mm-hmm. About seven years. Wow. Speaking of teaching, so as we, everyone knows that during pandemic, everything has to be changed somehow, the strategies or the approaches. So on your case, how did you adjust and uh, what method or format did you use to keep your teaching going? I'm pretty sure it was a little bit tough in the beginning, right? Yeah. It, it definitely is because um, our job is actually we, we like other other than private we actually got ourselves involved in the school CCA which I told you how I started in so so there's government we teach in schools and we also teach our private lesson for private lesson it was easier because mm-hmm. um, it's a it's a it's already the time where everything is going online so we could actually move our lesson online so this is what I do during the pandemic I won't say it's I don't feel, I don't feel challenging for me, honestly. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> That's good of course, um, when it comes to teaching, we, we don't lose that kind of personal touch, but we do have need to um, change the method of teaching a little bit because online, you can't really go hands-on with the students. Yes, yes. Like, That's what I'm about to say. Yeah, because it may be a little bit tricky. So if, let's say, you are dealing with adults, so I think... Yeah pretty easy to um, manage because the, the communication skills are there, the interpretation of the skills are there, but when it comes to younger kids, it's a bit challenging. It would be nice if their parents can sit in during the online session, but of course parents are also working from home. Yes, yes. Yeah, so it would be quite a challenge thing. So you, we have to deal with it differently. So for me, it, it's not hard for me to conduct lessons online because actually way before the pandemic i have been giving online courses as well so okay. my students are not just in local my students i do have students from other countries as well yeah yeah i think the hard part is to how are you supposed to communicate with the students to get a point yeah. so, because i think on the hands-on we normally just okay i show you this you follow and i think it's more how you're gonna convey the message correct Correct. That's the tricky part. So what I do, what I did during that period of time is other than the online class that we are doing, I will actually record a video after that for them and to give a short a video clip on the simple explanation. Like let's say if their posture is off or their hands movement, how are they, we they have to focus on which finger part, which hands portion to put the pressure on. It's kind of like a more work to do instead of yes. a one-to-one class so they have to do it more systematically mm-hmm. it's not like um just face to face it's so easy i can just demonstrate to you i can just guide you along and let you feel how my fingers move etc now because um, i think the situation in singapore is pretty quite um okay now yes are actually heading back to the office and but not for the younger age group younger age group the school still remain um i think they do it online but for the secondary school we actually started teaching in schools already mm-hmm. so during the pandemic session uh, the period of time the challenge is when you're teaching in a government school so because lessons still go on current yeah. school activities still go on but they do it online mm-hmm. but the tricky part is that uh oh the very practical thing is that it's challenging if you don't have your own instrument at home. And okay. Most students that we have in schools, the government schools, they actually don't have their own instruments. Yeah. So we kind of got to just get them to visualize. Oh. 
So that was the the first like three four months All I right. would do. All right. Actually, based on the online session, we didn't really um, teach a lot of new skills, so we basically do a lot of revision. So okay. uh, that, there's a lot of other things you can do with the with the kids also because uh, in music that it's a very wide um wide broad area. Other than the technical skills, you have to be very strong on your rhythm as well. So for online mm. lesson, actually, we progress back to the basics. So we actually get them to do a lot of rhythm counting, rhythm playing. So we actually get them to for for myself, I actually get them to track on things that they can find at home. Simply just mm-hmm. your hand, you can just use your hand to practice the rhythm, and just do uh, or just do something fun like a chopstick. Imagine that you're playing with a drums, etc. So the main thing is to get them to revise on the rhythm. So basically, online session is a lot of revision. So hopefully, coming year they should be they should be easy to start off with a revision. Then we go, move on progressively. So because it's a period of time where kids have already lost touch with that instrument. Yeah. Yes, precisely. Yeah. Can and they can they go to school now or still not? Um, they are actually in school. They are actually going. Okay. To um. So uh, then I mean from uh, there. They can do the hands-on uh, practice for the but instrument for the older older kids, but not for the younger kids. So basically, okay. things are still not exactly back to normal, which is which I think is fine because for me, I'm quite I'm quite fast to adapt to the changes. So, but I think it's also something that we have to learn to progress and change. You know, pandemic is a period that um it caused a lot of inconvenience to people. But yeah. I think it's also a good opportunity for for us to actually learn to open up a new opportunity and new perspective as well. I mean, that's how we grow personally, no matter where you where what you're doing or where you are across the global. You know. Yes, I I, I like uh, the way how you say it uh, that you have this kind of mentality, and uh, because not everyone, right? Uh, that will be very positive in 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 this pandemic. I mean, of course, it was tough. I am the same. I'm on the same page. But I also think the same way that there are a lot of opportunities over there. And for example, doing this Zoom interview, I never thought about it in the beginning. And then I'm like, okay, this is a perfect idea because now it's pandemic, uh, it's uh, less travel, then I can just schedule. Uh, of course, during that time, we don't have different time zone, <laughs> but now uh, it's just a matter of scheduling the perfect time that work for both of us. So I like what you're doing too, because I think personally, putting work aside, putting music teaching aside, I think personally, deep down, I always have this, I feel very inspired to in fact, it's also another part of what I secretly want to do. Something that I hope that, um, no matter if it's through teaching or my personal life, I hope that I'm able to actually have a small community that we can actually encourage um, each other, especially the ladies. You know, I think I personally find maybe I grew up with a lot of ladies friends who are not so confident. Yes. I'm also, someone that grew up with very low self-esteem so I kind of overcome it and I hope that I can help more ladies to overcome it so I, I like what you're doing because I think this is a kind of thing that we can actually connect with people around the world you know it doesn't matter whether you're here locally in the same country but just like now you're in Spain and I'm in Singapore but we can still meet and we can still connect and I think it's a good way to actually spread more positivity around Yes. Yeah. The most important, I would say, is that you personally, within you, you believe it. Because we know that um, right now, it's a combination of what makes you happy, that you want to pursue. And the practicality is that, what can you do to have income? Yeah. Right. So in my perspective, it's very important, especially nowadays, that we pick something that we are passionate about, we are dedicated about, but whatever makes you happy and whatever meaningful to you, I think that's the main, I mean, that's the most important goal to pursue, right? So.
why do you think it's important to um, continue playing this uh, Chinese traditional instrument called Lu Jing? Uh, what value does it give and uh, how can you influence especially not only the new generation, but also in a modern world? I think a very good value that we can give and encourage and pass on is that no matter what you do, no matter what you do, you have to you have to dedicate yourself, the patience, and kind of determination. And patience, I think, really plays a long part because yes, to learn a skill is never easy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I went through lots of things also. So this is something that I think uh, is a value that we can actually pass down to a lot of uh, younger generations down the road. Because something I observe is that a lot of young kids nowadays they don't really have um, the mentality of understanding why are they doing this. Yeah. Probably, probably sometimes it's just hey, I just find this interesting. I go for it. You know. I think it's better for me to quote an example. So I have this student who actually been with me for many years. There, there were a lot of times that she complained to me that she don't like it, <laughs> but she's still learning it. <laughs> so I think that's a good point because because I can really see her progress and along the way, what we want to encourage, what I want to encourage is that you don't give up. You don't give up. Okay. Give yourself time to explore. Give yourself time. Give yourself opportunity to learn something. And since you're already in it, then why not you just do it out of it? It doesn't matter. You want to venture into other area. I always tell them, then go for it because it's your life. Mm-hmm. If you find that along the way you learn something and this is not for you, you want to explore something else, and then go for it. This is one of the value, a uh, kind of a social value that because in the progress you actually teach the younger generation to kind of values like determination, patience, and you know give yourself a chance to actually go and explore. I find it really a uh, kind of a therapy for your oh, men- yes. mental mental health. I would say mental health because to learn an instrument it involves a lot of um breathing technique there. It's a kind of um. Mental strength training, I would say. Mm-hmm. Learning and teaching is totally very different. So, mm-hmm. along the way, as you teach also, you really learn to open a new perspective and actually, you you know how to guide the student better. So, mm-hmm. there are a lot of them come and tell me that, hey, they actually find a lot of improvement in their mental health also. It's good. Learn to actually take a step back. They learn to be more relaxed, have more patience. You know, it's not just learning an instrument, but it's kind of a social value that you can always bring, yeah. and they actually apply it to their work also. So I think it's, this is something that really, really touching for me. And yeah. recently, I have student that actually tell me that I help her to find confidence back in playing the guitar again. Ah, uh, that's good. Another third point is that I think strongly, uh, which is I think the most important point is that, like I said, this is a traditional instrument. Yes. So personally, I think this kind of Oriental stuff, this kind of um, traditional culture value, is something that I think it, it's a pity if we actually just let, let it go. go. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, it's so it's so interesting. I I'm actually someone that values um other countries' culture a lot. I love to travel to blend into the culture to actually yes. explore. This is a value that you know if you, if you don't if there's no people to spread it down, then this thing will eventually lost touch. And I think yeah. it's really pity because generations way above us, the our ancestors, the joy of taking something and exploring something into a traditional thing, no matter is it an instrument or art, traditional arts, traditional, you know, I think there's so much more um, value in it. This this kind of value actually gives more. I feel, I feel it's more meaningful than having a job that pays you so well. Yeah, this is what makes us the same. I mean, we are like-minded people, and we we, we kind of jive with the same perspective in life. I I agree with you that there are some people who just pursue because of the income, and it's tough. For my fellow music industry people, I think it's a hard time because I witnessed so many of them 
not able to because they are just instruments that you cannot do online like yeah. fashion <laughs> yeah. you know yeah I think I think this is a very real thing that I'm pretty sad but I think what keeps me going hopefully can help you also is to really find like I said everything goes back down to the core so if it's something that you find a period of time that you know this pandemic it's not it's not helping you you're going through a hard time especially in terms of the income it would be good if you start to explore some ways of what can you provide for your student because like I like I said music is a something that is not just about playing you know you have to go back down to the core of your foundation the rhythm the play why not go ahead explore into other area with your student hey you know this period of time we can't have hands on why not we work on this area that it will actually help you to further enhance your the playing you know mm-hmm. yeah like I said I actually do a lot of reading practices a lot of um, explanation in terms of different techniques so we go into a lot of details about it there's actually a lot of things we can do so don't be discouraged I think the, the, the another thing is you have to know your student needs as well if let's say they are just students that just want to you know play for the sake of fun then of course it's going to be a bit challenging because it's going to be a one-way thing not a two-way thing you know yes yes so you also started uh, entering the online business or the e-commerce by selling uh, skincare products and cosmetics so share us a little bit about how everything started and selling this uh, these products i started venturing into skincare because um, something i believe is that skincare it doesn't have to be expensive for it to be effective because yeah. products being products they are just like supplements what goes on is your lifestyle, the kind of lifestyle that you want. It's just a part of our overall health. Also. So I started to bring in this product um, uh, launched by this um, company, Mishang. Uh, actually, it's a mm-hmm. farm biology. So um, mm-hmm. they actually have two um, umbrella companies, one major in the cosmetic and one major in the skincare. So I'm into both. So what interests me is that their products are really gentle, yes. easy, hassle-free, and affordable. <laughs> it's kind of what what I think is a dream for everyone, you know, because because I mean you don't want to put tons of products on your skin, and end up it's not effective. Personally, I believe the best makeup is actually a good skin, <laughs> a healthy skin. This product, uh, this, this company that I work with is actually, um, they are from China and Taiwan. So they have two different two different sites. So the China is the place where we actually um, do the manufacturing and Taiwan is the site that we actually do a lot of the research and the laboratory work. Before I bring in, I actually been a consumer for one year and a half. Nice. So I personally want to use it on myself first. And as I use it, I really find that my skin got better because I'm also someone that has pretty sensitive skin and hormonal issues. So on and off, I get breakup. I think this is really something that um worth to bring in because like I mentioned, skin issue is always a big problem for many ladies. So when I, when I, when I really find that this work on me I actually get some of my um, family members and relatives to try it out and they all have really really good um, review about it and they can really see it and what surprised them is that it's so affordable Uh so I created a website I do um, word of mouth referral so we kind of just I started off by just really giving because I really find joy when I heard people giving me really positive um sharing that hey, if this product really helped them a lot I kind of just have orders coming in naturally <laughs> the demand just yeah came. so that's how that's how that's how my e my e-commerce business actually started to pour in it was not planned <laughs> it yeah. was just really started off with I think this product is really good for me and I think it will benefit my friends my loved one around that's how it started to develop into an e-commerce business <laughs> okay.
that I do, I I'm also actually doing some training for people to actually start their e-commerce. So ah, nice. I I won't say that I'm really really good at it, but I think um very important thing is that you have to be you have to know why you want to start this thing in the first yes. place. Because I started off with I I don't have any intention of earning money in mind. I don't have any intention of I want I want to start this to earn extra income. I totally don't have that. That's why I I just give it as a gift. So it everything goes down to your value because if your value is not strong in why you want to start this business, ultimately you have to find joy in what you're doing. So <laughs> something that's very important to me. If it's just like my e-commerce business, I can give free advice to people around. I I don't charge you for consultation, etc. In fact, I give it for free because. Earning side income is not my intention. My first priority is always spread the knowledge around, right? So you have to know why you want to start the e-commerce. The why? Yes, I like that. Want to bring in, and I think second thing is it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be um a one-way success journey. You know. Yes. <laughs> to a lot of commitments, you have to really spend time to really know your product well and explore the. Pros and cons. Gain a、uh, because for me when I first started, I actually、um, have a lot of feedback from my friends. You know how can we、uh, like how this product works for him, how this product works for her. So you have to gather your marketing audiences also. You have to know if the product or the e-commerce business is going to be helpful to your community. So I think that's a very important point also because you you want to start a business, you want a long term one. You know you you don't want to just earn for a short term period. And then you know you don't have a community, so this is something that I value in. I want a community of、um, audiences that really encourage each other. So、yeah. the thing is that you have to you have to really consistent and patient. Like I said, in、yeah, patient. our music topic, you have to be patient. You have to be patient. I when I started my e-commerce, I actually make a loss. And I did not earn anything from it because,、uh, in fact, I'm paying a lot of things for myself because, because of the、uh, marketing resources, the gifting, you know, the sharing. But I don't, I don't find it,、uh, I don't find it discouraged. In fact, I'm enjoying every step of the way. So I think if you really, the younger generation, if you really want to start,、uh, if you really want to be an entrepreneur, no matter is it e-commerce business, no matter is it something that you want to start a little. Skill sharing a little company. I think this is something that、um, you have to know. Why are you doing this? What is your value inside inside this core? Because if your value is not strong enough, it's very easy for you to get distracted and you just like, oh, it's not doing anything. It's not yeah, happening, yeah. and you just eventually turn away from me because distractions are real. Distractions are real. I went through a period of time like. Uh, I don't want to do this anymore. You know, <laughs> like why am I giving myself this work? <laughs> like, like I'm not earning, and why am I giving myself this 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 kind of chore? Like your family might not understand you. So the very very important thing is that you have to be very strong in your own value of why you want to bring this in, why you want to start this in the first place. For me, keep up is never in my dictionary. So when so when I know I want to start something, I will I will persist in it. So I hope. This is something that will be helpful to you in your consideration, whether in considering whether you want to start your own business. You have to know your core value in it. Oh, I love that! It it's it says so. To sum up our conversation, like I've always have with the past interviews that I had. This is one of my favorite questions, actually. So,、mm-hmm. how do you keep yourself optimistic? I think the first step is really embrace your own emotion because that's the way that you know you start to explore into knowing what are the trigger points, and it's only when you know, then you know how to work around it. You know, people can give you solutions, people can give you advices, but it may not work for you. For me, when I feel down, I actually love to give myself time to, you know, just give into the emotion. I just sunk in. If I want to sleep all day, then just be it, you know. <laughs> It's good that I think you surround yourself with 
friends who are understanding and say, you know, my social circle is actually really small. You don't have to have a big social circle. But anyway, who you mix around with as well. You know, yeah. I think it's very important for us to mix with like-minded people. Like for me, I really love to mix myself around people who are really, really conscious with health and really encouraging. You know, no matter what you're doing, you are doing different things, but it's a really kind of positive part that you want to surround yourself with. If, if let's say you're always surrounding yourself constantly with negative people, you are actually absorbing the negativity to your own energy. Okay. So I think that's also one part that helps me to keep my mental health thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think I'm pretty blessed in that area I, I, I actually learned to Say no To certain group of people mm-hmm. That I, I learned to Explore Social circle that I want to Surround myself with Yeah, And you always need a personal space To go because you, there's so, there's, Humans are just so limited you, you can't keep giving And giving and giving without Recharging yourself you know it's yes. only when you see your own value Then you can really constantly give more If you don't start mm-hmm. listening yourself I think it's a pretty hard thing to Keep yourself positive Throughout the period Yeah, oh my god That's that's very profound uh, conversation <laughs> And how you, you keep yourself optimistic And I love it, honestly I can I can tell you that we have the uh, same mindset and uh, that keep us uh, connected and uh, we are on the same page. And uh, yes, so it's a very, very um, interesting, a lot of things I've learned from this conversation. And uh, again, thank you so much for, for your time. Facebook. My personal IG is actually Azil Beloved. So it's my name A Z I E L. Then Beloved B E L O V E D. So that's my personal account. I usually share a lot of covers and you know tips of. I I constantly share on my personal account to how to keep yourself positive. So if you are interested to find out about the skincare products that work so well for me and so many of my friends, do visit B V Z, which is uh D for donkey. D for vanity <laughs> and Z for zebra. <laughs> okay, DBZ, DBZ Beauty Stop. That's my our IG account. You can find us on Facebook. So. All right, yay! Thank you so much. I am so grateful and I'm so thankful that another productive day that I have uh, with you, of course. And um, I hope. It gives you a positive feeling as well while we are having this uh, conversation. And, and... <laughs> That's great. I I have the same feeling. So thank you so much for your time. Stay safe. Bye. <laughs>